Hi, this is Dr. Ross, and this is the Organization of the Body lecture for both my class and Dr. Camp's Anatomy and Physiology class. Uh, this lecture should cover um, uh, directional planes, regions, cavities, body cavities, membranes. Oh, fuck. Hi, this is Dr. Ross, and this is the second lecture um, for organization of the body. Uh, this is going to basically summarize some of the characteristics of uh, life, focusing on levels of body organization. I'm going to name and describe the body systems and their functions, and I'm going to leave you to identify, for the most part, which organs belong to the body systems mentioned in this presentation. So before we move on to discuss the different organ systems uh, and structures of the body, it's helpful to consider the structural hierarchy, that is how an organism is assembled from smaller and smaller components. The human organism, which is the organism we study in anatomy and physiology, um, is composed of multiple organ systems. These organ systems work together to keep the human functioning, okay? Um, <clears throat> organ systems themselves are groups of related organs. The organs within an organ system are coordinated to perform that function. So, for example, in the digestive system, you have several different organs working together to ultimately to ultimately break down food and um, absorb nutrients from that food. Organs, of course, are made up of tissues, and tissues are made up of cells and molecules. Now, cells, of course, are the smallest living uh, entity where there is life, um, and so the cells are going to be the base living component of each tissue, and tissues are made up of different types of cells. But cells themselves are made up of molecules and atoms, and different types of cells are going to have different types of molecules and atoms. Uh, so cells within the intestine are going to produce different types of molecules and atoms than cells that are found in the brain. Okay, they all have the, the same nucleic acid, the same DNA, but they're going to make different uh, types of molecules and atoms. So they'll be different on the chemical level. Not completely different. They will share some functional activity, uh, but there will be a lot of differences, and this is what makes them obviously function differently. So in this class, uh, what we're going to cover for Anatomy Physiology 1, as well as Anatomy and Physiology 2, is we are going to... <clears throat> We're going to learn about the human body by breaking it down into these different systems. Uh, in anatomy and physiology one, the organ systems we're going to focus on uh, are the is the integumentary system, the skeletal system, the muscular system, and the nervous system. Within each of those systems, we are going to look at the organs in those systems. So we're going to look at skin, bones, cartilages, and joints. Uh, we're going to look at skeletal muscles, nerves, spinal cord, the brain, the eyes, and the ears. <clears throat> and within those organs, we're going to organ systems uh, and organs. We're going to look at the tissues, uh, and we're going to go over the four major tissue types. These are going to include. This is going to be the epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscular tissue, and nervous tissue. And then finally, we're going to look at each of these tissues on the cellular level. We're going to overview the cell biology uh, at the beginning of this class, and then we're going to look at, at any of the specialized cells uh, that function within these systems. So for example, we're going to be looking at muscle cells and neurons uh, because um, these are very important in the function uh, of those two systems, <clears throat> the, the muscular and nervous system. Uh, and finally, we're going to also do a brief overview of chemistry, uh, and we will also look at biomolecules and electrolytes because these things are important uh, in the function of many of the cells, and of course, because they're functioning in the cells, they're also important in a lot of the organ systems that we're going to be studying in anatomy and physiology, too. <clears throat> So before we dive into the details of the organ systems that we're going to study in anatomy and physiology one, 
I want to start out with a really general overview of each organ system. Now before I do this, I want you to keep in mind that these, are, these divisions are kind of arbitrary as to what organs are included and which are excluded. Um, <clears throat> so for example, skeletal muscles are attached to bones and are part of the muscular system, but smooth muscles um, are not part of the muscular system. Uh, and also things like assigning, <clears throat> assigning organs can be imprecise because some organs belong to one system, but also may have functions that are important to another system. So um, in reality, most organs actually contribute to more than one system. All right, so from now until the end of this presentation, I'm just going to briefly describe each of the systems. I'm purposely not going into detail because you're going to be expected to investigate these systems um, yourself as part of an activity. So first, let's start with the four systems we're going to be discovering or discussing in anatomy and physiology. We have the integumentary system, uh, which we'll cover during this course. Um, the integumentary system encloses the human body, um, and it includes structures. <clears throat> Um, on it that are important for thermoregulation and also there are many sensory receptors. Of course, this is just a few of the things the integument does. The skeletal system supports the body and in combination with the muscular system, it enables the body to move. We have the muscular system, which in addition to enabling movement, it also helps maintain body temperature. The nervous system has many functions. Uh, some of those are detecting and processing, processing sensory information. The nervous system is also going to be important for activating the body's responses to certain stimuli. And of course, it does many other things as well. Um, the cardiovascular system, as shown here, um, delivers oxygens and nutrients to the tissues, to the cells in those tissues. Uh, it also performs a role in temperature regulation, and it can contribute to re waste removal. The lymphatic system, uh, one of its jobs is to return fluid to the blood, but it also plays a role in immunity to pathogens. The respiratory system removes CO2 from the body and it also delivers oxygen to the blood. Uh, those are the major functions, but it has other roles as well. The endocrine system uh, secretes hormones and regulates body processes. The endocrine uh, is kind of the master uh, controller of the body. <clears throat> the digestive system, of course, processes food uh, so that the body can ultimately absorb nutrients. It also uh, functions in waste removal. The urinary system controls fluid balance in the body and also contributes to waste removal. And then we have the reproductive system, the male and female reproductive systems. Uh, these systems can produce uh, sex hormones and also they contribute to reproduction of a new human. Some bodies more than others, but both are required to some degree. And that is it for this second lecture. Uh, please make sure that you take the participation quizzes and get started on your activities and labs that correspond with this material. Uh, doing so uh, soon will help reinforce this information. Thank you.